much. I want to welcome everybody here, but especially Stav. Um, thank you so much for doing this for us. We're, we're very excited that you're here. And, and I know in recording it, more people will want to watch it as well later. And um, since everybody knows you, I'm not going to give a big introduction, but I have been very curious and can't wait to ask you because I get excited about grandmothers or family recipes. So before you start, can you tell us a little bit about your grandmother? Yes. So I actually, I, I wanted to think about what's the best way to do it because uh, the first stage is to boil some stuff and I want to start with boiling them and then I will keep talking because while they are boiled we have nothing else to do so um, I will try to talk at the same time but um, before I talk about my grandmother um, so what we're going to make today is called uh, leek uh, pancakes leek latkes leek however you want to call it leek meatballs we call it tzitzot prasa which prasa, it means in, uh, in Ladino, this is like the, uh, you have Yiddish and you have Ladino, it's the average Jewish language. <coughs> so prasa means leek. So we call it tzitzot prasa, which means leek patties or leek meatballs. Um, that's the leek. Um, it's very expensive here in the United States. Um, it's used quite a lot in the Balkan area and the, the Jewish Balkan, uh, that means Bulgaria, uh, maybe Greece. So my grandma, grandmother is from Bulgaria, and I'll tell you a bit about her soon. But I want to start to start first with um, the boiling. I put some water in the uh, to boil, and I want to clean this potato because we're going to boil it with its um, how do you call that? With its skin? Yeah. shell. It's not a shell. Skin. Skin with its skin. So I just want to clean it a little bit. Leaves. Just wash it. And I will put it in while my water is boiling. And um, we want to start boiling the potato uh, first because it takes the most time. So while the potato is uh, boiling, I want to tell you a bit about my grandma. So my grandma was born in 1935. Um, yeah, she's 86 uh, uh, now, 86. And uh, she was born in Bulgaria, in Sofia. Uh, that's the capital of Bulgaria. And um, she got to Israel when she was 12, so 1945. And that means um, it was just in the time where the Holocaust uh, was, was happening. Uh, and uh, Bulgaria was, uh, as, as you probably know, was actually uh, working with the Germans. They were um, not one of the countries that were trying to fight the Germans. They were uh, supporting them. But the Bulgarian king, um, he really liked the Jews. He, was, uh, uh, he really appreciated them and he didn't agree to give them away. And not only him, also the other citizens. So during the Holocaust, um, until 1945, basically, um, my grandmother couldn't really do anything. They, they were stuck in their home, uh, couldn't really go anywhere. But in 1945, the king helped the Jews uh, to leave and to go to Israel. So my grandmother got to Israel in 1945, uh, when she was 12. And she arrived at uh, uh, Ma'abara. And Ma'abara is a, it was a camp for the, for the Jews that, uh, that arrived to Israel. And I want to show you a picture. I hope you will be able to see it. Mm -hmm. um, oh, there it is. So there she is. Okay. Um, so here you can see uh, my grandmother and her mother. So my grandmother's name is Pnina. I didn't tell you that, Pnina. Um, she was actually born by the name Sarah. Um, and she changed it to Pnina uh, later in her life. Um, and here they are in the Ma'abara. That's the camp where they had the tents. That's where they put all the new immigrants that came to Israel, uh, really the beginning. Um, I don't know if you watched it. There, there is a very good mo movie about uh, the Ma'abarot, the, this camp that's called Salah Shabbati. Um, I'm actually planning on uh, uh, having that movie uh, in the JCA in a few months. Um, so I really recommend you doing that. 
and uh, continue to talk to you about my grandmother's history. Um, I want to show you. Um, wait, it's pretty difficult this way because I my computer is in. Oh, okay. Okay, so here you can see a picture of my grandmother and my grandfather, uh, Moya or Moshe, Moshe, Moya. Um, unfortunately, he passed away about uh, 16, 17 years ago. He is from Latvia and they met in Israel. Um, as you can see here, he picked her with his uh, motorcycle from school. And uh, uh, the school that she went to, the Hebrew gymnasium, Herzliya, Herzliya Hebrew gymnasium, that's the oldest, the most, uh, the, the oldest and the first um, Jewish high school in Israel. And this is actually the same high school that my father went to and the same high school that I went to. So um, it's, uh, <laughs> it's something in our blood. Um, and actually today my grandmother lives uh, in the same apartment where my father grew up and that's basically five minutes uh, walking from the uh, Erzliya Hebrew Gymnasium. So um, as you can see, my grandmother has been in Israel since it started and um, she's uh, really a part of the Israeli society, but she did get to Israel when she was 12. So a lot of uh, Bulgarian culture got into, into her life. And um, for me, as her grandkid, I don't really feel the Bulgarian culture in every other place other than the food. So she, uh, unfortunately, now she, she's pretty old, she, so she doesn't cook a lot um, and she lives alone today. Um, but she used to cook a lot for us and, and it was um, her most famous dish, the latkes, the, uh, the um, prasa latkes, the prasa, kitsot prasa. Um, so this is something that we would usually eat in Passover. Um, if you did look at my recipe, you could notice there is breadcrumbs in there. In Passover, you switch the breadcrumbs with the matzah crumbs. Um, matzah, um, not really matzah, well, you can do matzah crumbs or you can do matzah um, flour. Yeah. Um, and uh, this is something that we would usually eat in Passover. And she made it vegetarian or not vegetarian. It, it, it depends on who she makes it for. There were times where I was vegetarian, so she didn't make it with me. There were, now my sister is vegan, so she would make it with meat for her. There are tons of ways to make this. Um, um, if you remember, I told you at the beginning, I put, uh, I want to boil the potato. Um, but as, after I looked, I did some research online. Some people don't even use potato. They use uh, onion. Um, but you can really use uh, different kinds of things in this uh, recipe, but this is actually my grandmother's recipe, how she's done it for centuries, really centuries. Everyone in my family um, ate it. Um, and, and yeah, um, something interesting to say is that my grandmother, this is something that not a lot of people understand, is that there are people that are originally from Tel Aviv. Um, every time I tell someone that I was born and raised in Tel Aviv, they say, what? I, I thought Tel Aviv is a place where everyone from the north, from the south come. They live there when they are 20, 30, they have their life and then they leave. Um, but actually our family has been in Tel Aviv for years. When you uh, look at my father's side, he was born in Tel Aviv and my grandmother has lived in Tel Aviv uh, for many, many years. So now I grandma, I Could you hear me when I was away from the screen? You, you couldn't, right? Mm. Okay, so now I have my potato, my, my water bowl, so I'm going to put it in the, uh, um, um, it's not a pan, into the pot uh, to start boiling my potato. I put some salt inside and, uh, and then I'll be back with cleaning the leaves. So I put some salt inside the water. Uh, what were you about to say, Laurie? Sorry, speak. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, while you're gone, I'm just curious. I'm not much of a cook, but I have never cooked with leeks. So I was going to ask everybody on here, if by show of hands, has anybody else 
has cooked with a leek before. Yeah, so so leeks are, are actually, so because I've been doing those a uh, few times right now, I uh, actually had a chat with the cashier at Publix and she asked me what's my nationality because she was very surprised to see a man buying leeks. Like wh why would the young man buy leeks? Um, and she told me that she's from Armenia and uh, it's based, Armenia is also kind of Balkan. And um, I told her that I'm looking at uh, uh, Prasa. I asked her if she knows what Prasa means because Prasa is for Jews. We, that's how the Jews used to call it. And she said that she knew what Prasa is. And uh, the leeks, I don't know if you've ever smelled them or, or seen them before. They really smell like onion. They smell like green onion actually. And um, what's really unfortunate for me is that you actually don't eat most of the leeks. We're going to cut them right here. And we're going to throw away all this because these are, we, there is nothing to do with those. But something very, very important to first do is uh, when we cut the leek. So as I said, I'm cutting it right here. Let's see if I can change the screen so you can see. Yes, perfect. So I'm cutting the leeks. As I said, all of this is going to waste, but there is nothing to do with it. I did keep a little bit uh, because this is more, more closer to the core and that's fine. Um, so something important when you work with leaks is that you will see it's full of, of sand inside. You have to clean it very, very well. I was just cutting it and I have some, some sand in my, uh, uh, on my uh, cutting board. So after you cut them, you throw, away the, you throw away the leaves, you have to clean it very, very, very well. Otherwise you're going to have sand in your, uh, in your black patties, in your leaf patties. So it's important to remove and see that you have no sand inside. Really clean it well. We also have to remove this other side. But I removed really a bit because I don't want to take more parts of the leaks um, because I do want to use as much as I can. All right. So after I cut the leaks and I have, look, from what I had, this is all I have left but this is going to be um, more than enough for a single person. Um, I use here four leeks. You can use five, you can use more. In my recipe, there is 10. That's the recipe my, gran my grandma gave me. Um, and for 10 leeks, she makes them for a lot of people. So she makes it for the whole family. Um, you can really substitute the, the recipe however you, however you want. So I took it by hand. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the leek, this part into three or four pieces um, because we're going to boil them this way. So we have pieces like this. It doesn't matter if they are uh, equal or not because we're going to boil them. Um, so we had our potato now, we had our potato for a few minutes in the water. Um, it's really important that the potato will be very soft, like we want to make mashed potatoes. Um, if it's going to be not soft, it's not going to blend with our leeks because at the end, we're going to blend the potato with our leeks. And that's going to be our base for the, for the uh, patties. So this is very important because I didn't see that before, but now after I cut the leeks, there is more sand 
more sand inside and I need to wash it more. You see, it's very important to clean it as much as you can. Otherwise you're going to have sand inside your water when you boil it and it's not nice. So my grandmother, she makes a lot of stuff, not just leek patties, of course. Um, there is something that she makes that I really like. It's called Voldorf, uh, Voldorf salad. Um, this is a, a very weird salad because it's sweet. It's actually a salad with uh, apples and pineapple. And uh, I think uh, there is some uh, cabbage and some mayonnaise. It's a very weird salad, but it's very good. <laughs> And she was the person, she's, well, she's still alive, as, as you understand, but she doesn't do that anymore. She used to be the person that makes all the cakes for all the birthday, uh, all of the birthday uh, parties. She was basically the cook of the family. And uh, she, she has no brothers and sisters. Um, um, and... Uh, my, uh, so my, my father is her middle child and uh, she has two other, two other uh, children. Um, so my, there are three brothers. So my father has an older brother and a younger brother. Uh, none of them uh, became as good as cooks as her. Okay, so now I'm going to check on the potato to see if it's uh, if it got a bit soft, and maybe it's time to put the leeks inside as well. So I'm just gonna take a knife. Okay, I think it's time we, we can put the leeks in a second. The leeks take much less time than the potato. Um, the potato, as I said, needs to be soft so we can blend it together. And as you see, the leeks, they're very small. And this is a vegetable. It's going to be very soft very quickly. So I'm going to wait a bit more because my potato is not soft enough. So uh, my grandmother does it in a pressure pot. Um, I don't know if you say, the, is that how you call it in, in, in English, the pressure pot? Yeah. Um, so she, it takes her seven minutes to boil the potato and the leeks. And uh, she told me, because I don't have a pressure pot, she told me 15 minutes and 15 minutes was not enough for the potato. It was more than enough for the leeks. So I learned through practice to see that the um, potatoes take a bit more time. So I want to ask you now, uh, because I don't want to talk only myself. What kind of food do, do, do your family, did your family bring? I mean, what what's your uh, where is your family from or what kind of uh, Jewish food do you make in your home? Does anybody want to share? How about Leonore? Do you make food in home? Were you cooking? You have to unmute. Unmute Leonore. Unmute. There okay. you go. Tell us a little bit about. My uncle was a Jewish chef. Oh, wow. And he ran a little delicatessen for a few years in Syracuse, New York. So I have a few of his recipes and they're just priceless. One of them is stuffed cabbage and it's the best stuffed cabbage you'll ever eat any place. But it's a lot of work as you all know, if you've ever tried to make stuffed cabbage. And another one similar to what you're making today, Stav, is the potato pancakes. The old fashioned method of grating the potatoes. I still grate potatoes. I won't even put them in the Cuisinart because it has to have a certain texture. Right. There's certain things that you do to give it a certain touch or taste that makes it unique and makes it like the original. And once you start changing it and doctoring it up, it's not the same. So those are my two favorite. Oh, and my mando, which I don't make anymore. I, I used to cook, I used to bake, but I, I don't do it anymore. But I still have the recipes that I and I used to make it for people. And I miss it. Yeah. 
Sophia, can you share anything about cooking? Sophia? See if she can unmute. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. I do, depending for what, but I use everything that they are using here in the United States because most of the Jewish cooking here is Ashkenazi. So, which is kind of a quite blunt and so on. <clears throat> I love. Where, where are you originally from, Sofia? Pardon me? Where are you from? I am originally from Poland, but I used to live in Israel. And when Staff was talking about Tzrifim, I know quite well I was living, uh, I mean, I uh, emigrated from Israel with my, uh, I mean, to Israel with my parents. And at that time, when you came to uh, Israel, they gave you an area where to live. So we were living in Tveria or Tiberias. And uh, it wasn't, it, it's a place where my father couldn't find work at that time, it wasn't developed and so on. So we wanted to go closer to Tel Aviv. So we settled in Holon. And when we came to Holon, it was true, Hol in Hebrew means sand, and it was a city of sand. You should see it now, each time I come, I, I am lost completely because it's a huge, huge city. And even the hospital is a world known, Wolfson. It is one of the best hospitals. St staff could tell you that, right? Yeah. Wolfson I actually had, hospital. I don't know if you, if you were in my event, I actually had the CEO of Wolfson Hospital in Hulon. Uh, yeah. We were talking about COVID in Israel a few months ago. Yeah, yeah. Holon, Holon now is a very big city. It's right, yes. it's close yes. to Tel Aviv. Yes, as a matter of fact, Holon was called, when I came, it was called Gomulka City because we left when Gomulka was in power in Poland. And it is all the uh, emigrants were of Polish descent in Holon. So they called it, oh, it's Gomulka City. I mean, later it changed. It was unofficially, it was never really uh, called uh, except by the emigrants and everybody else knew that if you are from Holon, you must be originally from Poland. So that's it. That's, that's nice. my background. And Rhoda, I know Rhoda is a baker. Rhoda, are you there? Rhoda. She has to unmute. Uh, I'm trying to see if she can unmute. Rhoda? I'm here. Hi, anything you want to share about baking or cooking? No. No? <laughs> okay. I'm just along for the ride today. Okay. Enjoying Stobbs' buoyant personality and enjoying hearing about his mummy. Yes. Mm. Bob or Gina, do you bake? The Brotherhood. I used to make lucky for the Brotherhood. I, with uh, we had the, the potatoes already. They were they were already. Uh, what the frozen the frozen ones? Potatoes. But, we, but I, I've always done that with Mike Elkin and myself. We've made them many many years. But that's my that's my Jewish cooking. Gina doesn't cook much in Jewish cooking. We did make cornbread yesterday, though. <laughs> that's not that's Jewish. Good. Cooking. <laughs> I discovered cornbread here. I yeah, like it. Yeah. It's good. Good. Yeah. Well, I miss yeah. baking hamantash, and that's my specialty. I'm not good at rolling the dough, but boy, I am a champion pincher. I mean, <laughs> my corners are beautiful. You know, I actually, I, I, maybe I've told this before on our Hanukkah Havdalah. Um, that I actually never heard the word latkes before arriving to the United States because my family is really mixed. We don't have any strong nationality. So my grandmother is from Bulgaria. Her, uh, my grandfather, her husband uh, that passed away uh, uh, 16 years ago, he's from Latvia. And from my mother's side, um, so it's also really mixed. My grandmother is, uh, she was born in Egypt, but her family has been in Israel for many, many years. And her, um, my, my grandfather from my mother's side is also in Israel for a lot of years. So it's really mixed and there is no real 
um, nationality, in, uh, we are Israeli, Tabarim, that's, that's uh, Tabar, as you can say, Tabra. My mother was born in Russia, and my father's side of the family is from Lithuania, so we had, when I lived in Atlanta, we had this wonderful restaurant opened up called Nikolai's Roof that everybody wanted to go to. You know, you had reservations for months and we got there and realized that it was the same cooking at great expense that we were eating at home. And so just a small update, my potato is still not on the place I want it to be, so I didn't put the leaks yet. Uh, it's taking some time. Um, it's really important to be patient with it because in my uh, experience, if you're not patient, the potato just doesn't blend into your, and, and then it's just not going to work, so. So how are you testing your potato? Are you poking it for softness? Yeah. Uh, ah, the big knife. Uh -huh. <laughs> Rachel, do you cook? I do cook, yeah. I don't have anything to that was really passed down from family, but I'm cooking with my family now and hope to pass those things down. Nice. Uh, so I don't cook, but my grandmother, you know, we had, um, they, my grandparents lived in New York. My grandmother's currently in River Garden. Her birthday is in March. God willing, she'll be 105. What? Wow. Wow, good oh. genes. Oh my. Oh. But she was, you know, she was our, you know, she just would cook for every family gathering, every Jewish holiday that we would go up to New York for. We lived in Pennsylvania. My other cousins lived in New York and one in New Jersey. And we would all gather together. And I never saw my grandmother eat. She would sit down, but we would all eat. And she would always be telling us to eat, eat, eat. And, but she would eat. If you watched her, she would eat as she cooked. She would nibble here and she would nibble there. <laughs> But one of the things that like have stayed down with me and I think will stay with my kids isn't this kind of lakas. It was the lakas at Passover you make with the matzah meal. And I don't know if everyone else did, but you make it with matzah meal and you yeah. leave it to let it sit in the fridge. You fry it, of course, in the oil. And then you take sugar and you dump right. sugar on top of it and you shake the sugar off and you eat it and then you eat it and it's it's delicious. Yeah. Do, you mean, do you mean, is it the one with potatoes or the one with eggs? It's the, with eggs and matzo meal. It's oh, yeah. delicious. It's what, delicious. Do you mean, what do you mean by matzo meal? It's, um, did you buy it in the stores? Like for matzo, if you, you know, you can buy it as matzo farfel, which is the crumbs. And then you can buy matzo meal, which is kind of like a, flour I guess but it's not it's pretty grainy um yeah. and you it's um and we call it lakas so when we were making for Hanukkah lakas and I was telling my son he's like oh you're making lakas and I'm like no not the lakas you want <laughs> he loves the he likes the Passover matzah meal lakas that's what okay. my, that's what my my mother always did and I do it too except right now I'm single so I don't have I, if I would cook everything, I mean, I cook a lot, but if I would eat everything what I cook, I wouldn't be able to go through the door. So, but <laughs> yes, I, I did this when my kids were little. I used to do all the time. And there is a Jewish name for it. It is called Hemzala. That's what my mother called. I don't know if, you're, if you know that word. No, no, they, they would just call it lakas and, and we would flood the kids. My grandma couldn't make them fast enough. My grandfather had to help. Couldn't make them fast enough. All the grandkids just, you know, we were fighting, you know, for, you know, to, as they were coming off of the yes. fryer into the plate. Yes, they are delicious. And with sugar, because at that time when I was li uh, wasn't living here, we didn't have syrup. So we used sugar and it was very good. Hi, okay, time to put the latkes in. Uh, not, uh, not the latkes. You, <laughs> you were talking about latkes, so I was thinking. It's time to put the leek in. <laughs> <laughs> what about chopped liver? Is chopped liver Israeli? Chopped liver? I love chopped liver. Russian. We had chopped liver a lot in our family. That's my favorite, chopped liver. Yeah. My mom would I cook it like when it. I was a kid, and I would have to leave the house. I could not stand the smell of it. 
Oh, I love mm. it. I love it. My favorite dish. My mother used to make chopped liver. It was great. With chicken livers. With chicken livers. Right. We have beef tongue. Uh, chopped liver, they were both pretty strong um, in our family, especially in Passover. That's what we would have on our table in Passover. Mm -hmm. You used to put, put schmaltz in. I don't know whether you used to put schmaltz in it anymore, but schmaltz was, was with my mother. But I know it's not healthy. Schmaltz. And then you'd eat the gribbonus after Bubby would make the uh -oh. you'd eat make gribbonus. Cholesterol. Whoa. They were good. We used to make the um, for our women's satyrs. We used to have delicious vegetarian chopped liver, because of course we needed things that were, um, you know, that were kosher for people to eat. And the vegetarian chopped liver was really good. Good, it's good. What was it made from? Eggplant, or I mean, the West used to make. No, it it, um, eggplant is from peas. Oh, from peas. Oh, no, it was with peas, and I don't know what peas and might have been. They were good. I have a strange remembrance, though a strange association with chopped liver. We had some at. Oh, I guess some, some kind of a family event one time. And my little nephew, since it was brown, thought it was chocolate. And it turned out to be liver, you know, <laughs> chopped liver. And he said, mom, he was a little kid. He said, hold out your hand. And my sister held out her hand and he went, <laughs> spit it right in it. So uh, either you like liver or you don't like liver, and evidently he didn't. But I guess if you were expecting chocolate, it wouldn't be a bit of a surprise. <laughs> All right, so I'm preparing a few things um, for when my uh, potato and my leeks are coming out of the uh, pot, the boiling. Um, so, oh, wait, okay. So um, I have here some, some breadcrumbs and some eggs, and I have a peeler for the potato. And as you can see here, I have uh, the food processor. Is that that how you call it, food processor? Blender. Yeah, mm -hmm. blender. Um, we have, we call it a Meji mix <laughs> because uh, it's, I think it's a, a sort of a brand, Meji mix, it's like magical mix. Um, and I have two plates. That I'm going to, uh, it's like making, I don't know if you've ever made schnitzel or something like, we, we need to coat it with the breadcrumbs. So on one plate, I'm going to put the breadcrumbs and on the other one, I'm going to put the finished, um, the finished uh, uh, leaf patties. And uh, after that, after I finish them, I'm going to uh, fry. And my mother, she likes to bake it. To be honest, it comes much worse when you bake it. Um, so I'm gonna fry like my grandmother does. And it's really important um, to fry it medium heat. We're going to talk about it because you don't want it to be too crispy outside and you want it to be uh, uh, completely baked from the inside. So you have to fry it medium heat, not too high because then it's going to be very crispy outside and not going to be inside made. Also, I have here, I have here some uh, uh, ground beef. Um, I think it adds a lot of flavor, so I'm going to add, and, and my, my grandmother does it this way, I'm going to add a, uh, add a handful of uh, ground beef to, um, uh, okay, I think I'm going to check on the uh, potato and the, and the leeks. It's a shame we're not going to be able to taste this. Well, if you live in Mandarin, you're very welcome to uh, come okay. by and have some. <laughs> I'm actually uh, not too far away from the temples. <laughs> My grandmother and grandfather used to have a bakery, actually, at one time. And then um, that was when they lived in a little city in Iowa. And then when they moved to Rock Island, Illinois, she still did baking at home, but he became a tailor. And they used to have chickens in their basement, raised chickens, which always fascinated us as kids. And 
you know, it was one of those things, I guess, people who grow up on farms get used to, but we never did get used to seeing the chicken in the basement and then on the plate on Friday night. <laughs> but um, my grandfather was quite a character um, in many ways, and he never had like regular tickets and things like that that you give your your customers, you know, like you give them a stub and it matches something. He just used to write when they would leave off things at his tailor shop for him to sew, he would write descriptions of them in Yiddish. Mm -hmm. you know, like a, I don't know, like a, you know, a longish farts or something like that, you know, that he, he just wrote descriptions of them. And when they would come in, he, um, you know, he would look at them and, you know, between his descriptions and them recognizing their, their items, he would, you know, they would be just fine. So he did that for, for many, many years. Um, they, they were colorful. They were fun. I have happy memories, really, of all of my grandparents. I didn't see them much because I didn't live near them. But the time I spent with them, I have fond memories. Thanks for sharing. And I, I wanted to share something else with you about my grandmother. I was just putting some uh, grapefruit juice uh, in my glass. It reminded me that uh, uh, when I was a kid, my grandmother used to um, peel grapefruit in her home and then put it in a, in a box peel and send it to me and my sister. And she put a label on it. And instead of writing grapefruit, she wrote vitamin C. And she always called it vitamin C. That's how we call it vitamin C, so she always, always called it vitamin C. Today, this is my favorite fruit and my favorite juice, red grapefruit. And um, um, another tradition that I have right now, so my grandmother, she doesn't have a smartphone. She doesn't know how to use video ch chat and stuff like that. Actually, my father is trying to teach her, but because of that, every time my father meets her on Friday, he goes, he, she lives alone right now in, a, in an apartment. He goes to visit her. And at 2 p.m. in Israel, which is 7 a.m. in here, on Fridays, I wake up to call him on video so I can talk to her on video because that's the only time where I can actually catch her. Um, yeah, before that, we really like to go with our cousins, my sister and, and our cousins. We, go, we like to go to her uh, with her. Um, to um, like uh, drink coffee or something like that. She used to host a lot of big uh, meals and um, but, but in the last few years, she, she just doesn't have the power for that anymore, unfortunately. My other, my other grandmother lives in, um, in an institute like, like, um, like housing, like River Garden. I was so amazed by, by River Garden. Really, it's an amazing place. And um, my grandmother lives in um, most of the places, and this is really sad if you ask me, most of the um, housing for uh, elderly are called uh, in Israel Bet Avot, which means father's house. And Bet Avot usually is a place um, um, that they used to call it this way. And right now, they, they changed most of the names um, for housing. They, they, they now call it um, protected housing, the Mugan. And that's like the code, mostly. Okay. Um, most, of the, most of the residents. Okay, I'm going to check again on the potatoes and leeks. <coughs> I wonder if we'll ever have Omic Shabbats again at Temple. It seems like such a long time since we were there. We will. Totally, just patience and some time, but we will. I guess. Maybe, maybe quite a while. I know usually I have stuff in my pantry, you know, to bake for Omig Shabbats and, um, you know, buy one, get one or on sale or something. And I'd always 
keep up owning Shabbat baking part of my little pantry. And finally around Thanksgiving, I just gave up and donated all of it for Thanksgiving to JFCS, figuring, well, somebody will make Christmas cookies with it or something. They always pack the ground beef in a way where you can't open and then and then close it. That's and right. I, I have to tear it apart. And I, I did want to... the same thing, just from the front. Lori, you look so happy today. You really do. Big smile. Well, I'm actually, I'm happy to hear. I'm always happy to see everybody. Me too. We're missing everybody. We really miss it. We do exactly. Yeah, the quarantine gets to you after a while. But look what we have. We have all these various Zoom programs. Been great. Hi, uh, Rachel. Tell hi. Reba hello from me. Hi, Rachel. <clears throat> I don't know what I would do without the programs that we have for Zooming that it yeah. keep, keeps us busy every day. We get mm -hmm. to see some of the people yeah. and we socialize this way. So it's better than nothing, I'll tell you that. That's yeah. for sure. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm so grateful for technology. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it really has um, helped keep connections going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Chef Stav. I know, so he's getting the food processor ready. Yeah, we, we, um, very soon I will have my uh, the leaf and the potato out. Um, it's taking much more time than I, than I usually take. I don't know, maybe it just feels this way, or maybe I just don't check the time when I cook. You've been cooking it for 43 minutes. Well, we didn't start from the very beginning. Right. All right. So forty. Uh, and maybe and maybe um I don't know. Maybe just my my stove. It, it takes my, a long my, time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what kind of potatoes did you use? They look like regular. No he has no idea. He has no idea. Regular, regular potatoes. Uh, uh, <laughs> maybe russet, that's the reason. I mean, a russet potato or. A... Oh, I think yeah. I think it was a russet potato, yeah. Yep. Okay, have everything out. Okay, so I'm just gonna wash it a little bit to um, make it uh, uh, nice to work with because now it's piping hot. Looks like you made your lunch. <laughs> It's like I don't even need the peeler because the skin is getting no. off the potato very easily. Just Although it is very hot. I leave the skin on my potato no matter what I make. I just like to do it, I guess. You leave the skin on? Yeah. Doesn't make any difference what it is. I leave the skin on the potato. Well, I'm trying. I, I want to mix everything together. I don't know if the skin will be mixed very good. Skin has all the vitamins. Mm hmm. And it gives it texture, I guess. All right. So the potato is nice and soft. I removed most of the skin, and now I just want to put it inside the food processor and just break it down a little bit. Very hot. So I'm just gonna chop it. Nice and soft. I might have been away, but does your grandmother know we're talking about her today? Yes, of course. 
she I asked her for the recipe. She had to write it down for me. She, <laughs> she didn't have the recipe written down because uh, she makes it uh, by heart. I mean, she remembers how to make it. Did you help your grandma cook at any time? No, she didn't let anyone anyone in the kitchen really. Mm. Um, yeah, she doesn't like people helping her. She's a very proud woman. Not only with cooking, with really everything. She doesn't like to be helped. Okay. Who would clean up after that? Right. Who would clean up afterwards? She, she would clean up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she lived alone. She's been living alone for. 16 years. Okay, so I'm going to uh, now I have only the potato inside. So I don't want to puree it. I just want to slice it more. So I'm just going to use the tools to chop. I just I just want to chop it more. Okay, so I have it nice and chopped. So now I'm going to put the licks inside. Which perfect. All this suspense. Look at all these anxious faces. <laughs> I know, just wishing we'd be able to taste it, too. Yeah. <laughs> and smell it. Sometimes that's the best part. I love the smell of frying onions. Me, too. I think the potato might have been better a bit more. <laughs> to uh, boil it a bit more, maybe, because some of it is <laughs> I, I don't work a lot with food processors, but uh, okay, I think that was good. This looks okay. almost like it's pureed. Yeah, it's. Uh, I probably did it a bit too much. Uh, but it's still going to be fine. Um, yeah, this is a bit too much. Uh, but now I'm going to add in well, you put the, a little extra breadcrumbs in it, it'll thicken up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The egg, the egg will help. So now I'm taking meat, some ground meat, and I'm going to mix it with the spoon, not with the processor. So you don't like... brown it first, it browns while it's cooking. Yes, yeah. Oh, that's a surprise. Uh, wait, what, what, what did you mean? What What did you ask? I don't know. I, yes, if you brown the meat before you put it in the mixture. And it doesn't look like it. it looks like you're taking it out of the pan. He did. He did. He's probably going to cook oh, yeah, it. It's ground meat. It is ground meat. Now oh. I'm just going to mix it in. <clears throat> And I'm going to add egg, one egg. In your recipe, it says two eggs. Does it make a difference? Yeah, because it was two eggs when it's 10 leaks. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, really, it's really, she told me that it's really with the eye. You just have to figure it out.
Maybe I'll get some food on the way. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and get some food now? They are. Lee, your cabinets look like mine. Let me see yours. Pardon okay. me? Oh, oh, mine are in between. I'm in my den, but Lenore, they look like yours. I'm oh, they could. They're good. I it's a, good. They're about the same age. Yeah, it's a go, good practical cupboard. The, the wood and the finish. It keeps its shine. It keeps its color. Mm -hmm. Mine too. So I'm, I'm adding a bit, a little bit of breadcrumbs into the batter because it's as as we as we think it's too uh too liquidy. But we're also going to coat it with breadcrumbs. Okay. He cooks. Am I on? Yes, you're mute. Okay, you're on. He, he cooks like my uncle, the chef. He never. Oh. He never measured anything. Whenever I would try to get a recipe for him, I'd follow him around. And as he'd throw the stuff into the bowl or the pan, whatever it was, I'd have to say, wait a minute, how many did you put in? How much? Well, I don't know. It was maybe between a half a cup and a quarter of a cup until it feels right. A pinch and a handful. That's right. That's, yeah. that's what my, grand, my grandmother really didn't yeah. have the recipe. That she, yeah. she would just tell me what to do. That's how they cooked, sure. Yeah, and uh, I after I did it a few times, I know how to the measurements yeah. are supposed to work. Sure. You get the feel of it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm taking a spoon and uh, making like these patties, and I just want to uh, flatten them a little bit and coat them with the breadcrumbs. Not too much breadcrumbs. And I think it's too liquidy. I'm gonna add to a lot more breadcrumbs to the. But this is about the size. Uh -huh. Okay, good. Try it. So I'm going to add more breadcrumbs to my batter. I thought you would be mixing the breadcrumbs with the. Uh... So it's both. Yeah. Yeah. It's both like you make, uh, I don't know if probably that's the way you make meatballs, but in Israel we a lot sometimes put breadcrumbs in the in meatballs. Hmm. This looks like a good recipe. Looks, yeah. yeah, it's very good. Yeah. You got everything there in one mix. The meat and the starch. Well, it's, it's eating healthy food, but then frying it because everything is very healthy, but then it's frying it. <laughs> okay, this one is much better. I'm just gonna make a few of those. I, don't, I won't uh, have you here for the whole, <laughs> making uh, all of them, uh, but then we will uh, fry, uh, fry them. So I need to uh, eat my frying pan in a second. It, isn't this where you said the applesauce was more American than no. Israeli? No, there is no, no, no applesauce. No applesauce. You can, you can eat this, so it depends. If you eat kosher, um, so you can, you can, you can, we, we would eat it without anything, but you can eat it with ketchup. If you don't eat kosher, you can eat it with sour cream. Um, yeah, a lot of things work. Okay, so I just have a four of those ready to be fried. Now I take a nice pan and I put some uh, fried oil. We don't want the highest heat, as I said before. Um, We do want the pan to be nicely coated with oil, like we fry, uh, uh, not the healthy way. <laughs> it doesn't have to be deep fried, but... 
but it tastes so good. And you yes. can taste, tastes good. Yes. I don't know how many times it will take me to get even closer to how my grandmother makes it. And she may, she does it just, it's so delicious. It's really, the, it's so funny to say as a kid that my, one of my favorite dishes was leek, leek, leek patties, prasa. I mean, it sounds so disgusting, but it's so good. I'm sure these are going to be delicious too. Did you tell me tell you in a few minutes? Stop. Staff, did you yes. try uh, instead of leek, just onion or onion is too? Um, so I saw a few recipes instead of potato, they use onion. But okay. if you don't use leek, it's not leek, it's not leek anymore. It's not, it's not pasta. I was thinking that leek is not always accessible. So could we use onion instead of leek? A great onion. Like a scallion? or scallions or so on. Leek, leek is accessible in Publix. I found leek every time I went to Publix. It is. Okay. It's, it's there. not cheap, but... Um, it may not be good these days. Yeah, it is accessible, but um, <coughs> if you don't make it with leeks, it's just a vegetable uh, latkes. And right. you can make it however you want. There is a ton yeah. of recipes for vegetable latkes. Well, I have to go. Okay. I'm sorry you won't be able to see the, the result. We're just gonna try, we're just starting to um, fry them. Right. Leonora, mm. are you gonna make these later? Me? Yes. I don't have any leaks in the house, but I might when I All go right. to the store next. Yeah, and then I could let Scott yeah. know how the recipe went for you. Yeah. It's, it's easy, no problem. Something different. Well, if you ask me, this is not easy <laughs> for me. It's not well, easy. I didn't mean it that way. I mean, it's stuff that I can remember. No, I mean, I, uh, this is a lot of work. If yes, it you is. Ask me, it's I hard. like to do uh, simple stuff. Like uh, I do great um, chicken breast, very good, or steak, or <laughs> those you just have to put on the pan with some uh, spices. That's that's the tr that's true. I didn't mean it that way. I meant that you, I can remember the recipe. I can remember what goes in it. That part's easy, but it's the touch that you have to have for it too. Yes. And that you've got because you learned that from your grandmother. Mm -hmm. Do we have to finish for something? I see people are leaving because it is one, but Ellen, do we have to finish? No, yes. you're fine. You can go. You can keep going. I know, uh, yeah. uh, Leonora, Bob, are you okay? I'm, you know, yeah. I'm gonna keep going. Thanks very much. Thanks for the recipe. Take care. All right. Bye Thank bye. you, Bob. Sophia, are you still with us? Yes, I am, but I have an appointment, so at okay. one thirty, so I'm leaving. But okay. thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Bye, Sophia. Bye, nice meeting. Nice being with you. And you. All right, you, you got your, your hardcores here. These ladies are gonna be making this later, I know it. Okay, well now, now we won't tell the ones, the ones that left that. Oh, we look get at to that, eat. you've got a, I we love it. To, we get to eat those. <laughs> That's a great camera <laughs> shot. <laughs> Yeah, we'll share them with you're going to you're going to watch me eating more for us to my eat. Lunch. Right. My lunch and dinner later. <laughs> I have so much left for, for this time and I'm making it get it again in 5 30. Well it looks great. It really does. And the, everything you put in it is very tasty, goes together well. Huh. Yeah, I might just try it. Only leek I know is leek soup. Uh-huh. Is it good? You like it? I don't know. I just remember seeing it. Uh -huh. I like leek soup. Something like that. But soup leeks I know have been cooked. Yeah. I've seen people cook with leeks a lot. Beagle scallion.
I mentioned earlier, my Bubby liked to bake, had a bakery for a while. Yeah. And her thing was that she used to put on a lot of things when it was done bake uh, before she baked it. She would make like a, a little water and sugar and a little cinnamon or nutmeg to um, brush on it so that it would get like a crinkly graze. Mm. Like, yeah, I mean, she did that on pies and cookies and oh. all kinds of things. When I make strudel, I always do that. Put on like a sugary paste with cinnamon so that we oh, that looks good. Oh, oh. oh. Yeah, the people that, that love are missing this beautiful color. Oh, they look beautiful. I can't wait to eat them. I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, good. And the meat's all cooked. I, you know, I bet the, the fat and the meat goes into the potato too. Right. Gives oh. it extra flavor. Yeah. Good. Does it smell good there, Stav? Yeah, it does. I mean, you don't really smell a lot from the from the vegetables because they don't have um, their own smell, but it right. smells like frying. And <laughs> Stav, about how much hamburger did you throw in there for that recipe? Well, now I have here four. I'm looking at looking at the batter. It's going to be around fifteen. Something like that. And that's half of the recipe. So about so, 15 for the amount I did, I did half. Okay. Because the whole recipe, it's 30. Okay. That sounds good. So what did you, you said you're doing something tonight at 5.30, is that chess or what? Who, do, who are you talking to? Stop. Sorry, what was your question? Didn't you say you were doing something at 5.30? Yes, I have another, I have with the um, Shalom Club, if you heard of them, they're in the web. Um, I have the same cooking class with them. Oh, okay. I thought maybe you were doing chess or something. I saw you do that. No, yeah, I had chess uh, last week. Well, you're going to have to get on the Food Network. What's that? What do you mean? Food Channel, you know, the Food Network. Got your own little cooking show. Mm -hmm. I'm not that good of a cook. <laughs> Drain it on a paper towel. I'm just gonna use some of this to get the oil out. We don't want it too oily. There it is. Woo! Oh, wonderful. Oh, they look it's so very good. hard, but I want to try it. Oh, where did you say you live? <laughs> I live in uh, near old St. Augustine Road. So do I. Hmm. Oh, that looks so good. <laughs> Hold it up again. Stop. Yeah, coming over. <laughs> I need to let it cool down a bit before, but. Okay. Oh, that they are beautiful. Great. Beautiful. Thank enjoy. you. Enjoy. Much. Thank you. Really enjoyed this. this very was much. great. I know it was a lot of work. Thank, Thank you so much. Now go and enjoy them. Enjoy Thank your you. lunch. I have Thank to clean you. as well. I have to okay. do the cleaning. <laughs> bye, have a great day. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Thank bye. you. Bye. Great.